Greetings. I will be presenting case studies of three severely ill patients suffering from classical autoimmune disease. Specifically, I will be reporting the remarkable improvements achieved through the stimulation of the immune response. Stimulating the immune system in autoimmune disease <clears throat> appears counterintuitive. However, recent research in microbiology has clearly identified the incredible capacity of microbes to persist in the body. This is achieved through a variety of me mechanisms, one being the production of ligands that act as antagonists of nuclear receptors. Dr. Marshall and his colleagues have shown the presence of VDR resistance in autoimmune disease and that Olmosartan is a VDR agonist with high affinity. The following case studies show the clinical response to an immune stimulation, stimulation protocol using Olmosartan in doses of 40 milligrams four times per day. Additional immune stimulation was achieved by the use of low-dose bacteriostatic antibiotics to inhibit both bacterial virulence factors and quorum-sensing signaling cap capabilities. <coughs> Case one is an ankylosing spondylitis in a now 50-year-old male. Onset was at the age of 26, initially as sacroiliitis. It progressed in a typical fashion and with increasing rigidity of the spine, fusion of the cervical facet joints, pain and fatigue. He also developed comorbid conditions including chronic prostatitis, neuropathy, irritable bowel syndrome, insomnia, depression, and he was un unable to work full time. He started treatment in December 2005. He experienced waxing and waning of symptoms, both physical and emotional, through the first three years of treatment, peaking in the mid-2007. Presently, he is no longer depressed and is back working full-time in international finance. His prostatitis has cleared, as has his IBS. Bone density increased 11% in his femur and 5% in his lumbar vertebrae over the last two years. And during that time, his 25D levels were deficient to the point of, in, of, of very deficient in his last reading, which was 14 nanomoles per liter. His bath ankylosing spondylitis disease activity index, which had risen from 8.8 .8 to 9.2 in mid-2007, is now 5.3. Um, just to go back to that slide, my lab, my slide tech um, put the ZSR as millimeters per hour. I hope you um, know that that's not per hour, it's per minute. <clears throat> Case two is a 37-year-old female who developed autoimmune arthritis two weeks after suffering from an STD. She rapidly deteriorated, developing dry eyes, mouth, raynodes, paresthesia, myalgia, malaise and dermatitis. Her diagnosis changed from reactive arthritis to mixed connective tissue disease. As you can see, her ANA was 1 to 2520, um, and her anti-RNP was positive. She was on Plaquenil for approximately a year. Um, and then she discontinued. She started Olmosartan in October of 2009. She improved rapidly. Today, she states that most days she feels normal and only when trying to do physical things does she realize that she's not 100%. She can walk on the treadmill and do light weights. She still needs eye drops, but only on waking. She is back to working full time. Her ANA is negative. Case three is a 44-year-old male diagnosed with severe and aggressive rheumatoid arthritis eight years ago. Unresponsive to treatment, 
He was plagued by side effects including recurrent and severe infection requiring hospitalizations, renal calculi, osteoporosis, and massive weight loss. Prior to starting Olmosartan, he had been on DMARDs since his diagnosis in 2002. He had been on Arthrotec, Celebrex, Plaquenil, Gold Injections, Embrel, Fosamax, Calcium, Vitamin D, and Ibuprofen. Now, a little more than a year after starting Olmosartan, his inflammatory joint disease has diminished significantly. He has regained 25 kilos and controls pain with low-dose ibuprofen. His Stanford Health Assessment Questionnaire score has fallen from 3 in both disability and pain categories to 1.5. Um, in terms of the immunostimulating effect, if you note at the bottom part of this slide, his RA factor has climbed to 134, his CRP has fallen to 59.7. In none of these or any other of the other patients treated, were there any serious side effects or infections? These three cases were selected from a cohort of over 200 patients that I have either treated or collaborated on over the last five years. They were selected because they were advanced classical autoimmune disease and they highlighted several important aspects of the treatment. All had a history of exposure to microbes capable to, uh, able to persist prior to the onset of their autoimmune disease. Case number one had severe acne and exposure to hepatitis B. C case two had antibodies to parvovirus B19 and chlamydia pneumoniae. Case three had antibody positive to Borrelia. What do these and similar results suggest? First, that Olmosartan is safe and well tolerated at doses of 120 to 240 milligrams per day. Second, it is an effective anti-inflammatory and autoimmune disease via angiotensin II receptor 1 blockade and VDR agonistic effects. Second, it is, third, Olmosartan is a VDR agonist that does not cause hypercalcemia. Olmosartan induced VDR activation resulted in increased symptoms and changes in clinical markers reflecting immune stimulation. The increase in immune response leads to apoptosis of infected cells. The increase in released cytoplasmic peptides and increased effector T cell activity causes a combination of a Yarx Herzheimer and iris iris like reaction. Increased pain, fatigue, transient skin eruptions, night sweats, episodic fevers were all commonly seen early in the treatment. Transient reduction in hemoglobin, white cell counts, fluctuations in sed rate and CRP, increased serum creatinine and uric acid were also not unusual. Serum 125D levels, however, fell. Fourth, that Olmosartan and antibiotics at sub-inhibitory doses can, over time, prevent progression and often even reverse advanced autoimmune disease. Fifth, Antibiotics used in this manner provoke strong immune responses as evidenced by clinical and laboratory reactions. Sixth, low-dose pulsed bacteriostatic antibiotics taken over prolonged time are safe and are not associated with the development of bacterial resistance or overgrowth of other pathogens such as C. difficile or Candida albicans. Finally, persistent infection is a likely cause of some autoimmune and chronic diseases that are associated with immune imbalance. The recognized capacity of bacteria to resist lysosomal degradation, to be able to transform into cell wall deficient forms, to communicate and share information, to create persister cells, and the ability to establish biofilms 
all enable persistence. Any or all of these actions could then have a profound impact on immune capacity and tolerance. If so, it will explain some of the mysteries still existing in autoimmunity and open up new opportunities for therapy. Thank you very much.